Okay, okay, unspoken answers to unspoken questions. Here we go again, viewers. Thank you for tuning. And this time around, we have a gentleman with the name of, uh, well, a doctor, precisely, a doctor, PhD. And, um, Due to the uh, Black History Month, we have in this guest of us, and he's um, travelled from far, and um, yeah, definitely he will contribute to our platform, and also generally what we want to talk about. Black History Month. So, Dr. Bology, we always say in this platform, we ask questions. And the first question we always ask, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to contribute to this platform and to share as a creative my thoughts and my experience in the last uh, over 20 years I'd have been doing what I'm doing so mm. it's my pleasure to, to be here thank yeah. you for having me thank you thank you um, also how really well are you you know we, we ask questions you know just that majority of men are going through a lot and we always ask most especially me and you know, our platform just to check on ourselves you know family doing well business doing well you know so uh, I'll say very well I'll say very well because uh, my God's grace uh, I have a proof for that <laughs> Mm. Uh, I came in here from Chicago. Uh, I've had a show uh, in Atlanta. I've had a show in Missouri, West Plains. I had a show in Chicago. I came in from Chicago to Heathrow and uh, I've been in Gilliam Kent. And my family, I have uh, a small family. Mm. Uh, a wife and two kids mm. came here with me. And uh, together, uh, we've been to Manchester for some creative engagement. Uh, we've been to Cardiff. Uh, we've been to Colchester, uh, Plumstead, London, and uh, Gilliam Kent. Well, <laughs> so you've been you've been up and down. Uh, uh -huh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we've been here and there, and um, I'm sure most places we've been are because as a creative. I practice every day and everywhere. Okay. So most places we've been uh, in Manchester, we were at uh, an apartment where I've been painting also oh. in London, also in Cardiff, everywhere. So this um, wouldn't have been easy if all is not well. So are you saying you go everywhere with your tools? You go everywhere with really yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> without without even you know uh having an office to to say i paint i'm i'm uh well let me let me do for context uh, i'm an artist i'm a painter and uh, a professor of art in the of lagos Akonga. and uh, i've been in studio for over 20 years uh, my specialization is painting i do all on canvas acrylic on canvas and you find my works all around in the uk sweden france and in the states to mention but a few i've had over five uh, over 50 group exhibitions and five solo exhibitions including international exhibitions so in this last 20 years I've been painting, even when I'm sick, I paint. 
is is more than a passion for me. Okay. It's an addiction. It's my way of life. Addiction. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> That's just a strong word though. Yeah. <laughs> That's a strong word. Yeah. <laughs> but that is what it is for me. So for me to be in the UK with my family and mm. I've been moving from one location to the other from from London to Manchester. I got to Manchester. I had to paint this part that we should be on holiday. But to let you know that I can't but just paint. And I, I'm not just painting because I'm looking for money. I'm painting to make a difference. I'm painting to add value. I'm painting to change narratives. I came from uh, Lagos, Nigeria. At the mention of that Yeah, Hustling, Hustling Spirit. Aha, you know, Hustling Spirit. But for me, um, it is what it is. It's, it's, just, it's just part of me. Painting for me, art practice for me, is what water is to fish. Yeah, okay. Because cause that, that's, that's, that leads me to the next question. Um, I was listening to um, a lady, you know, Katie... Uh, Katie Gordon and she said um, said something very profound like um, it in painting uh, is, is like a process and she said um, you know every every art depicts a story what's your own story yeah my, my, my own story is, is, is pretty unique um, I paint what is called a style called impasto impasto yeah Impasto okay. is, is an Italian word. Impasto is a thick application of colors uh, on, on a canvas. Um, and I do that not just because I try to create a tactile quality. I try to create texture. No. Um, Nigeria as a nation is, is rich in human capacity. We are over 200 million. We are rich in natural resources. But some of the stories you hear from this space doesn't sound good. Yeah. Uh, it seems hopeless. The more you look, the less you see. As you speak right now, we are battling uh, uh, flood. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean. yeah. But for me, um, as an artist, I try to make a difference. I try to make a difference with my art. I don't have access. When you, when you go to Dubai, you see the space there. You see infrastructure, same oil we have, because at times you begin to wonder: Is this the same crude oil, or is as granite oil <laughs> that they've been able to capture this result? So, for me as an artist, I don't have access to crude oil, but I have access to oil color. So, whatever you see on my canvas is what I'm doing with the oil color at my disposal, and I'm not painting the negative side. My dad told me how his dad told him that things never worked here. But for me, I've made up my mind that my children will not tell their own children. This same story that my father told me. And I'm trying to make a difference. How am I making a difference? If I end up getting somebody to invest into my art, what it means is that if I part with a painting, the proceeds from there, it means my framer will do another frame. My, the man who makes my stretcher will do another stretcher. I'll be able to take... Well, well, what? I'd, sometimes, you know, <laughs> I know it's been kind of... Uh, the viewers has to, like, understand, you okay. know, the, the process that, you know, that you use in terms of, you know, putting your work out there. Because... Yes, definitely, yeah. You know, uh, I was looking at something that you did one time. Um, I think it's, uh, it was on channels TV. Okay. And uh, you used a narrative of corruption. Yeah. And I know that is embedded into the society. Now, it's everywhere, though. Yeah. It's yeah, is it, in, in, is it in, in levels. In levels. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But saying that, if you know um, Switzerland, Geneva, majority, there's a place where, you know, 
acts and other guys store their, you know, whether millionaires, they just, you know, get some money and they move money to those uh, places. Now, you and your concept was, cor- I mean, corruption, true corruption, is that most certainly the, the one you, you had. But at the same time, how will you, because we, I know, yeah, that people are mo- moving money from countries to countries to countries using your work. So how do you do that without, or because it's corruption, whether you like it or not. So how do you deter people? using that using yeah using your art. work okay using my work um you know one thing about art is that art is the easiest way to do what what we're talking about because art has no specific value for example you know what an iphone pro max costs mm-hmm. everywhere art has no fixed you know, value. Right. It, it can be, it can be, you can peg it to, you can say this, if this microphone is an art, if it's, if it's auctioned, it can, yeah. it can sell for a million pounds. It can sell for two million pounds. It can sell for 10 million pounds. Mona Lisa is, is currently, is what, hundred of millions of pounds. <laughs> so, so for me, um, I know my clients. I know the people okay. I deal with. Okay. I know where I push my heart. So I know those quarters. I don't deal there. <laughs> because my every painting comes with a message. I know when I, when I did... A few weeks ago, I was in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And one thing I was doing is... I'm going to be running it on my Instagram page. Where my art lives. I know who owns my art. I know the kind of people that I want. I'm not looking for money. Not that I'm not looking, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing my art for just commerce, for just profit. I'm making statements for them. There are narratives, there are people, I, I, I want to, them to hone them because having them on in their space speaks volume. Yeah. They will be able to get the message I want to get. So I know where, I know those quarters, where yeah. those transactions. Right. Can I, can I pay? Um, another narrative to you. Okay. Uh, Twitter. Mm-hmm. Just um, three three days ago, it was bought. Well, it's been on the process. Some people, the CEO, they were the ones to make every program and everything. But hello. And then Mott had to like, okay, now he's taking over. That's the, um, the project of someone that had integrity, but it is taken over by, by, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, quote yeah, unquote. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So now, if I see you in another 10 years, 5 years, and I say, oh, professor, what happened? Uh, because we live in a world where change. commerce, yeah, commerce, they, they, they sell blood. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand you, but uh, for me, I know what drives and what fuels my practice. I know where I'm going. I know what I want to do. I know where I want to get and I know how to get there. <laughs> I know the fast lanes, but I'm not treading there because I'm concerned about making a bit of a difference for my nation, Nigeria. When people ask me, I, 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 with art, I said, with art, it may not go, it may not spread everywhere immediately. But you see, 
I teach at the University of Lagos. I have students under the sound of my voice, under my influence. I'm the staff advisor of Creative Arts. Mm -hmm. We have over 500 students. So if I can, in a way, influence them with these values, because most times what you, what you, you barely hear anything good about Nigeria. You look at the news. Now they said they are just you, you. You know what I'm talking about. In the last eight months, as well, the academics, the schools were shut, and now it's just it's just coming back. Nobody has been paid. But for me, uh, as an artist, I've been busy. Okay. I've just, yeah, I've been I've been practicing. I've painted in the last three years. I've painted more this year because this year since November 14, the school. You know, Asu has gone on strike mm -hmm. until until uh, just a few weeks ago. So, um, where can we see your work? Like, you know, uh, websites and um, other platforms. Yeah. Um, on Instagram is just Bolaji Ogunwo. Okay. On Facebook is Bolaji Ogunwo. Then I have a website, just www.bolajiogunwo.com. Okay. Uh, if you just push Bolaji Ogo on, on Google search, yeah. we'll show you. Yeah, viewers, you're listening to it now, so click the browser and um, share as well. Another thing I would like to ask, I know you've been busy. In terms of disparity between Africa, Africa art, and the world how is it um how is it the the market with uh com commercially how is because i know african culture uh i don't know we are laid back in terms of pushing a stop because like chinese they put their stuff these these days. There's somebody there that's already flying to buy at the auction at this this. How do you do it or do divide the na narrative of Africa art and the world? Yeah. Um, what you just said in 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 the last two three years uh, has changed the narrative, and I tell you, I uh, would facts and figures that African art is doing excellently well in the last few years. I was at uh, the Freeze London show uh, held a few weeks back and you see African art works commanding values. And part of what has changed the narrative in a way that has brought the visibility to African art is the Black Lives Matter. <laughs> so the Black Lives Matter was an opener, brought this global attention, brought this visibility, yeah. brought this recognition, and people that we now have, you know, all around the world, people now acquiring African. Now, I, I was in Missouri um, where I had a mural project, and. Um, it was a painting of a black, you know, woman and the kids that a white man did in the 1960s. So I was asked to, to paint this large mirror spanning about 30 feet by 45 feet in a public space. You know, this is uh, a, 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 a mural, massive. And you can see the appreciation. That place has become a center you know, where people come and appreciate. So African art in the last few years is is doing excellently well. People are now paying attention to African art. You know, there's so much writings. You know, before they thought African art is just, you know, where we just live, you know, in the jungle. Yeah. And um, our art is crude, going to the North culture, the Ife terracottas and uh, the Goku that we found years ago, and that uh, they said, oh, this couldn't have been done. Like the Ife art 
some they, they said oh that a race far superior to the negroes once lived here that this the people here couldn't have produced this if a head and uh, with this the naturalistic tendencies on there yeah. but all of that now have improved wrong by what is going on with the african art globally in space is fast gaining ground and getting attention yeah uh that leads me to the next question um the british museum they are log ahead with Nigeria. Nigeria needs or say to say that they need their artifacts the back. Yeah. And the British Museum is saying, no. Uh, yes, we took it from you, but it's not going to be given to you just like that. What's your take? Yeah, um, the, the restitution uh, saga has been known for for years. Um, the eighteen uh, eighteen ninety seven expedition of Benin. Uh, we 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 attended University of Benin uh, with my friend uh, Ajayi and uh, some other guys. So we know about a little bit of the history of uh, the Benin, and not just Benin, all Igboko. Uh, if uh, and all of that. Now, their, their claim is that oh, that these works have better visibilities. They, they have the facilities uh, to take care of it and all of that. But I think recently they started. I think they re- they returned a couple of them, and the fight is still on. That we said. We I know want. they've been like yeah. um, sending letters up and down, yeah. up and down. And things like that, but yeah, they, they've, been, they've been sending letters up, and uh, I think um, I'm trying to remember the name of uh, it's like a, a, a sculpture of uh, a, 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 a chicken, you know, that was returned to to the name. Chicken. Um, <laughs> is uh, uh, um, it's a sculpture, it's a sculptural piece, anyway. It's a bronze. So the the those works were were taken in court were stolen because they were not bought they were not borrowed mm. uh-huh. so they said let them come back to where they belong uh, but they said oh because the last time i was in sweden they were having uh, an african art fair if you need to see the queue of people waiting to see these sculptures behind the glass in foreign land and how much they had to pay to see that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Yes. Let me paint two narratives to you. One is okay. Even if they send it back, will economically will. Africa and Nigeria have the same economic value that like the one you said that the, the, in the Sweden I, I doubt if that happens okay so why do you want it back because it's ours <laughs> it belongs here uh-huh. it's just like somebody um, somebody just came and take away uh, someone's child someone these are heritage these are these are our background these are these are things that are forefathers these are history they're history yeah no doubt yeah no doubt so but i'm a business person yeah i like to take one pound make 10 yeah 10 10 pounds yeah, whether I trade t- t- 10 pounds, 100 pounds. Yeah. That's my own thing. Because I know a, um, an average guy in the village would, come, would not come to say, oh, you know what? Uh, 
let me go and watch or look at an art this person you know that we they return uh yeah. 19 whatever mm-hmm. whatever i'm not saying that we can't but Present. i think they, they they should be an agreement because that's me that's me you understand uh again the second narrative now this is 30 uh 31st of uh October. Yeah. This Halloween. Yeah. I've heard you speak uh speak on um I think you you are Christian yeah. and um you know I, I think you you said something that I listened and uh, said oh oh he's a Christian. Now is Halloween. How are sculptures? All those things. The same way we've been able to create those things. Because the ones in British Museum, I was told uh, there was like big power behind it now when Halloween is happening everybody paints the same sculpture people paint do 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 and you know whatever whatever and you even see Christian ah no I can't go out oh this 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 or some people say oh okay they go to sleep and something jump on them and whatever whatever now as a christian and as a person that does art halloween and art can you separate them Uh, let me just is a straight answer is a mindset mindset is a mindset that um one time i was at the, at the national museum in lagos and they started talking about uh, spirit in sculptures you know, there are people who don't go near sculptures uh, like the the concept of halloween and all of that there is spiritism there are powers yeah yeah <laughs> uh, you know, because when I see the Halloween here, yeah, they are trying to imitate the originals from <laughs> from that end. Well, uh, uh, not just that, not just <laughs> that. <laughs> imitate. <laughs> uh, they practice theirs. Okay. They practice okay. theirs. So, so let's say they, they they practice theirs. Yeah. But you see, all of these, um, it, it, like I said, is it, a mindset. Is what you believe. Is what now? Let, let me let me paint it very clear. In, in in Nigeria in or in Africa, when people die, people believe that um, they come back to the house <laughs> to scare people yeah. and all of that. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. And you see a doctor, a medical doctor, by training and understanding, knows that won't you know why? Because when he was in the medical school, he did what they called uh uh they've dissected the the body they know that once the man dies that's all but because our forefathers told us that when the man dies he doesn't go he overs he comes around and you are in your you are in your room you are in your room at night and um, you just discover that something is is, is moving uh-huh. in the dark you know, you discover something is moving in the dark, and uh, you are afraid, you are scared. But uh, all of a sudden, you get up to just switch on the light to discover that it is just a wrapper mm. on the door that the breeze 
is blowing and nobody's <laughs> coming to do it. So some of these things, I'm not saying because I, I know there are powers. Mm. I know things happen. Yeah. I've seen while I was coming, I think I, I was sharing with my friend, a lady on board on, on uh, uh, British Airways started looking for her passport. Very strange. And uh, they announced if you fly. And they said, oh, sorry, you can't fly. They were going to deplane the young girl. And the hostess announced that, please let us check under our chair. She was sitting right behind me. They found the passport seven seats away by the window on the other side. So some of these things will sound like a fable of story. Of story. I heard the story of a guy, a footballer from Wari who was traveling and uh, got to Holland and he couldn't find one leg of his shoe in the plane. He looked everywhere, couldn't find it. And uh, he got off the plane, he got to immigration and they looked at him and said, I have one leg, maybe he's having mental issue. And he started shouting, I don't have mental issue. I said, ah, he has mental issue. Yeah. And they returned him. He went back to Delta. And they say, you, <laughs> you, you, you they travel, you know, tell us. Free. See your shoe here. That's free. That's free. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Definitely. That's his free. Yeah. <laughs> there is spiritism, there is spirituality. But it, it depends on what you believe. Your belief system will determine whether that thing bears on you or not. Mm. There are powers, but there is one power that is superior. And that is Christ. Okay. Um, for every um, artist, yeah. even you know, individuals out there, there's always a pyramid that you always want to aspire for. You know, most especially the apex, like you. Uh, is okay. What is your apex? My apex is to to be a global brand, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I don't just want to be international. Hmm. I want to be global. There's a difference. Ford is a global brand. I'm not sure they have a factory where they produce in Nigeria. Or where they produce in Zambia or Somalia, but they are everywhere. So I want my ad, it doesn't matter where I'm producing from, to reach to every part of the world with just the same message. I'm preaching with it. Because when you look at my paintings, I, I paint from the positive side. I don't paint, my painting doesn't look like where I came from. I don't paint the negativities. I paint so that in years time, I'm painting for the hundred, two hundred years. How, how do you how do you separate the corruption then from the positive? No, no, it's there. I'm I'm painting from the flip side that this is what is going on, but this is what I would like to see. So I don't report what the newspaper is reporting because I will be singing to the choir. So, is there that this at this point there's a level of corruption, but in the midst of this corruption, I see oh, we are in a tunnel, there will be light at the end of this tunnel. So, the apex, the zenith of my art is that globally, uh, just like Leonardo da Vinci with mm-hmm. Mona Lisa, yeah, Michelangelo. Picasso. That Picasso, Pablo Picasso, that the years to come, um, the generations that would deal with the history of art will also know that at this point in time in Nigeria, when there was flood, when a, a, a pound was equal to over 800 naira, when there was poor leadership, uh, there was affluence. So that they don't misrepresent because the place is rich only that the people there are poor it's like the pareto's principle the 80 20 principle 20 rich people who are controlling 
the 80 masks. But that in the midst of that, I, I'm painting that we we there's oil, there's human capacity. You, you are here. I've been to a few places and I've seen Nigerians. We, we, we move things around. We change things. We are narrative changers. We are game changers. Find Nigeria in an office is doing excellent, excellently well. We have the energy. We are resilient. All of that is what you will find in my painting, in the texture. So I'm painting those resilience. I'm painting those, those energy. You, when you have in, in sport, name it. We are, we are, we are, we are there. So all of that is what I enshrine in my painting in a negative way even in the despite that things are low despite that things are down uh is a bend is not an end and a time is coming that uh nigeria will be what it used to be i see few people painting or or drawing majority of the people that i've seen uh, are painting or drawing you know uh, human or maybe like uh, you know um an artist uh a musician uh this celebrity this one and then go they, you know oh present this one like that but I know painting is different. Now, a mathematician will give you a formula. This is it. This is it. Continues to do this times this times this times this. As a painter, how? Because like like me, you know, I'm zero. <laughs> I can't even draw anything, face, whatever. So how do you? imbibe those things to young people okay. um, you see like you said mathematics in mathematics over the years to today one plus one is two yeah but in art one plus one is whatever you say it is that is the liberty that is the creativity that is the ingenuity that gives you that freedom to think out of the box. So, everyone has a talent. But, 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 yeah. but, but yes, sorry to cut mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I see some painting, I, you know, even drawings, and say, oh, yeah, this one, it was like this, and this, and look at it. The person saying it, and you look at the painting. I like. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you understand? Now you saying there is, you know, ingenuity. There is this. There is that. But okay, except when you okay, maybe like um, people like us, we just see like, what is this? So. You know, yeah. Continue to yeah. <laughs> it's it, 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 it mind boggling. I'm like, yeah, why? It's, it's, it, that is why I said one plus one is whatever you say. <laughs> so, it's what I, uh -huh. so if I now say, oh, this speaker now, yeah. I want to like, okay, draw it like this, yeah. draw it like this, yeah. this, this, and I say to you, <laughs> yeah, that is it. Somebody, okay. there was an art auction, and somebody put a banana. On the wall, I use a duct tape. A duct, duct tape, the, 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 just like this. It says like a cello tape to yeah. hold it down to the wall, and that was it. And gave it a title, and somebody got there and took the banana and ate the banana, <laughs> and the narrative started. And the man said that banana was worth some millions of pounds or dollars. So art is. Whatever, if you look at me and scribble something and say this is me, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that means okay, like you, yes, yeah, you've risen to this level, mm -hmm. 
yeah, <laughs> to this, <laughs> well, maybe not apex, uh-huh. still growing, yeah, <laughs> but me, uh-huh. if you go to London, London Bridge now, yeah, they know you, mm-hmm. okay, allow me to put your thing down, I put it there, even though my sculpture or whatever is better, you will still get the accolade there so why is it that <laughs> art cannot be like that uh, well you see like i said earlier art is about practice it's about thinking it's about the expression mm. and when i define when i you know i teach art he said art is a purgation of emotion is the expression of innermost feeling. So art, it is an art you can call a speed, a shovel, and a two-pass. It is an art you can, if you go to art shows, you, you see somebody, if I take color and just splash it here, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. and sign on it, and then begin to espouse postulations, to 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 explain what is not there. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. it, it seems, that's why I've given that explanation that one plus one is not two. All right. So we should just <laughs> so, we should just take it so like that. <laughs> whatever they give it to you, it, 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 there's what is called installation art. This is an installation art. I take this phone, I put it here, and I take this. I put it here. Nothing more. This is an art. And I tried to lead communication. <laughs> this is a phone. What the, then I begin to explain why this remote control is standing on this. So whatever I can defend to say about this <laughs> stand. So definitely anything I can mutter anything like that mutter. this your book <laughs> is an art okay <laughs> but you must have that standing you must have done you must have a background that has grown to that, that, that can defend <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. like if not they'll say watch watch, <laughs> watch this guy <laughs> so artists at times grow to a level and then they veer of course they begin to do uh, uh, try to remember his name now. His art looks childish and is intentional. He said he, he wants, he wants, he, he didn't want to compete with the, the Leonardo da Vinci Mona Lisa, the, the realism, the, uh, uh, the, the Michelangelo who painted line on his back mm-hmm. in the Sistine Chapel at the Pope, uh, in the St. Peter's Basilica in Italy. That, oh, they, are, they have conquered realism why do you want to compete with <coughs> mona lisa so this is your banner you see this silhouette this this is an art we call it silhouette so just as it is now this banner yeah uh-huh is is an art there are colors here there are words here there are so it can pack everything here this studio if you take a picture of it it can be framed and becomes an art. This shirt of you know, my uh, Michael Jackson in the past, his clothes were aha. Mm, yeah. uh, uh-huh. So you begin to how come somebody's clothes becomes, but it is not the clothes, it is Michael Jackson, it is the name behind whatever happened. So you find old artists that they just found the drawings. Then what would they find the drawing? You know the the four the, is it the four D now uh, uh, book we used to do writing in it? Yeah. It, it just scribbled something there and he signed it. Just a sketch. You know how much that was sold for. But you know why? It's because of the name behind it. Mm-hmm. So um, art is is in everybody. It can be developed. That tells there are three secrets to mastery in every field. Number one is practice. Number two is practice. Number three is practice.
practice. So practice, practice, practice. Lionel Messi is Messi. He, he puts the ball there. He moves back and bends the ball. He puts it behind the net. You know what? He's been doing it. So the same thing is an art of football. Because mm-hmm. art is the mother of all discipline. Art of engineering. There's no engineering of art. Art of music. Name it. Art of physics. Art of science. Because art gives you the liberty to veer of course and do things different. Think outside the box and change narratives. So everything you see starts and ends with art. The aircraft you, you, you're seeing before the Wright brothers were able to translate it into a flying machine. Leonardo da Vinci, 400 years, made the first sketch of the first flying machine from the eagle. That is, you see, when you look at the aircraft, it's like an eagle. Yeah. The hands are not called hands, they are called wings. You see the, the body in there. Because the eagle is the only bird that can fly and face the sun. That even in the midst of storm, you see when you are flying, they say, oh, please fasten your seatbelt, there's a bit of turbulence. Mm. You know, that thing happening outside is because we are inside. It's not funny. Yeah. Uh-huh. But the eagle is the only bird that can dare. Yeah, go, yeah. So, all of that <clears throat> is art. Your wristwatch is an art. <laughs> Everything around here is an art. I've, uh, I've, I've learned I've learned a lot <laughs> in this uh, short uh, 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 thank you. minute. Thank you. Uh, again, going back to commercial or economic. Yeah. Uh, as an individual yeah. and uh, as an artist, how do you succeed with and without without um, this global setback as an artist you know there's a lot of um, instability you know different countries are get, getting uh, bust you know globally so as an artist how do you with or without the economic backing that you because like you you can purchase a, a painting or um your your stuff easily you know oh internet oh this 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 you know but for some people they don't how do you then bring your work out to the public COVID did something great amidst the negatives. You know, during the COVID, we were, we were under lockdown. Yeah. We were confined. And like I share with a few places I've been on this tour, that the best times for my art is the last two, three years where my clientele has grown exponentially. Now, here is why. COVID kept us at home. People became bored. Nobody was buying cars because there was nowhere to drive to. And nobody was buying a new TV. Nobody was buying property because at that point in time, we were just trying to stay alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope you saw on CNN, you keep seeing the records, the numbers growing. So at that point in time, People were confined to their phones. People had time. Because most meetings now, you know, on Zoom, Teams, online. So people used phones like never before. Then Instagram. And people had time to check things. Then at that point in time, Netflix couldn't solve problems. <laughs> For people, they were, they were tired of screens. So uh, some people, so they need something that can change the ambience. Something that can engage them. Something that can add color. That can steer up. And that's where art. Art. So I started getting contacts. 
people finding me who oh, I like this this looks great my followership grew exponentially mm. I've had you know commissioned works so and from there because one thing just like in any other business uh, somebody finds you then somebody finds the person who found you and say oh you got this oh this is this guy and from there from one client to another and uh, this time last year I was in, in Chicago for an exhibition from Chicago I went to California from California to Houston Texas from Houston to Missouri I came back again in May and I'm back this time so I'm telling you this traction mm-hmm. to know that in in recent time irrespective of what has happened um the, then in the midst of that black life matters okay aha uh-huh. also open up that vistas of appreciation and understanding of oh african art people are trying to thought oh, art is just ornamental and art has become uh, a valuable form of investment in recent times so people invest in art you see art functions christies philips bohams and you see the value that was a freeze you need to see figures that works are, are going so art is becoming a collateral mm-hmm. uh-huh. so it's just beyond ornamental that something you just hang to display or to occupy walls so uh irrespective of uh, what is going on economically <laughs> and people still uh, understand investment will always be there and uh, since you know uh, uh, they, they want to keep their money where the money can go and that is one space you you if you have an art buy an art work this year in the next five ten years you can have you know because of our dead value and anything must have happened you know in the course of those years to the artist like a young one of uh, a young artist in, in Nigeria Oluwa Leomo Febi and the guy got his art into the auction houses and has been doing the last work at TK did about um, about 68000 pounds a young guy uh, so is is it is what it is and uh, art art would always uh command value especially yeah. with what is going on um I always ask questions and um what surprises you in your field <sighs> surprise what amazes me is uh, and I ask that question to those who acquire my works and why do we like what do you see in my works um, because at times I wonder because when people come with so much <laughs> now I'll give you an instance I was in Chicago and um, the gallery owner said there's a lady who bought one of my paintings but it's not just the buying but the circumstances around the buying that the lady walked into the gallery and started crying and uh, the last time i came so she told the lady that I was around so the lady monica so monica came uh, a black american and i said oh monica oh this is bola no Uh, so I said, listen down. What what is it? What do you like about my work? And she said, she started talking. And uh, all of a sudden, she started crying. <laughs> so she said, and this is what she said that touched me and surprised me. She said, when I look at the painting, is it is a painting of you know equestrian horses, you know, running. I paint a lot of that. Uh, the Doba. The Doba is uh, a festival from the northern part of Nigeria. And like I was sharing with them, the Doba is um, the festival with the largest number of horses in the world. Yeah. 
against the Windsor here, against whatever, uh, any any us, you know, event in the world. The Doba has more horses. And the horse is a symbol of strength, symbol of energy, a symbol of hope. She said each, each time she looks at the wall, it's as if those horses are coming out of the canvas to save the day. Hmm. That, that, that sounds deep. So, when people see, when I see what people write about my works, I know I've been able to try to enshrine certain things in there, uh, you know, put some works in there, try to create the forms, the texture. I try to capture the emotions. Like for the horses, I try to create an impression that when you look at it, it's as if the horses are actually on the speed. I try to capture that flight, the fleeting mobility of those horses. But I'm, at times I'm, I'm amazed. Maybe because I did them. <laughs> I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't really. But that is the, 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 the spiritual undercurrent of art mm. that words can't capture. You can't just explain it. it it's just there. And that is the, the, the it's, it's a gift. It's, it's a talent. Uh, we tried to to create, but I think it is is more than because at times I wonder why somebody is is willing to part with this with this kind of value in exchange for an art. I once had a client who said his wife must not know that he's buying this work, he, but he couldn't sleep that the work just kept coming to him and he didn't want somebody else to. So those are those are surprises for me that yeah i had this in mind and when i see what people say about my work that i didn't post there or you know the critics the the, the art historian or that uh, the covilinear put some some grammars together that uh, the, the graceful movement of, of the horses well I feel good about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it even, beats me. Even, even listening to you right now, yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it beats me all over. But yeah. um, um, it's, it's, it's so good. Yeah, so um, if you were to, to go back to your younger Professor Bolaji, what will you say to him? Okay. Um, if, if, if well, you uh, haven't been professors then, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> your yeah. Bolaji young Bolaji. Yeah. coming here. Um, if uh, if I could turn the hands of time and to go back to, uh, maybe I would have encouraged him to do more, uh, to practice more. Uh, and to give more attention to art. You know, back then in school, with my, my friend right here. Yeah, we were doing so much. We were so into football. You know, we... You uh, to become... Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were into football. But we, we, we've always been into the practice of art. And he has been a great inspiration uh, Back then, he, they, we could walk overnight, not sleeping. We, there were times we go back from from classroom, we go to exam hall, from you know, do run an assignment overnight. There was this competition, LD competition, you know, challenging ourselves to deliver excellence. So if I were to go back, I would. Uh, if I was in my class, uh, if a younger me would be in this in this class now, uh, maybe we'll be more pushful. We'll, we'll dedicate more time um, to to hone the skill, and maybe would have gone further or higher than where we are now. But we we'll thank God that because uh, uh, this art has taken us places and. Uh, in Missouri, we when we dedicated the mural, the mayor of Missouri came, and by the next day we were on the front cover of the newspaper. Yeah. So, um, 
it's been it's been it's been a win win. Okay. I will give God God God. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh last I always say for the viewers um our platform unspoken answers to unspoken questions. And you have answered a lot of questions. But for our, our viewers, um, what do you think you can give us to hope for to the next future you come grace our platform again? Yeah, uh, to everyone listening and watching, um, be the best of uh, whatever you are, whatever you do. Um, pay more attention. There's a price to pay for greatness. It's called attention. Everywhere I go, I pay attention to my environment when I'm on the train. Pay attention to whatever you are doing, whether you're creative in whatever field you find yourself. Grow. Read more. Evolve. Um, I tell myself I've not started painting. Yeah. Um, people say, oh, master. Uh, I look around. Uh, uh, yeah, prof. <laughs> yeah, prof. Uh, the, next, the next one now <laughs> is what? <laughs> yeah, so um, people should, should do more. Find means of doing what you are doing differently. Find means to make a difference. Don't don't rest on your horse. You have not arrived. You are not there yet. Um, if I still need to, if I walk on this street and I ask anybody on the road at random, do you know Bolaji Ogunwo? I ask the next person, do you know Bolaji Ogunwo? <laughs> is he a bus driver or <laughs> or what is he doing? <laughs> so that means you haven't done anything. I've not done anything. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever so you've been traveling all the world. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever you are doing, keep doing it until you become a household name. But if I say, do you know Mona Lisa? Um, you may not know Leonardo da Vinci, mm. but you will know Mona Lisa. Yeah. So I've not done my Picasso. art to a le- if I say Picasso. Yeah. So Picasso. Picasso is not a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picasso is an artist. Do you know Michael Jackson? <laughs> Michael yeah, yeah. Jackson uh, is not uh, uh, a politician. <laughs> so that so until your art gets to that level, that the question people ask: that, Can he get to that level? The answer is yes. Because when Michael Jackson started, he didn't know he would grow and get to that level but he kept doing music he kept churning out music and uh, the music got to somewhere somehow and that's it so until you don't know what particular piece will get into the hand of somebody and that will be the biggest break but if you don't produce that piece that break may never happen so keep doing whatever you are doing no matter how little it doesn't matter who is Whatever is coming now, um, you're on a journey and you will get there. It's a gradual process. And you're not going to aspire for politics? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, well, yeah, because, you know, you know, they, they, they ask Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, bring, <laughs> come and bring, you know, you, uh, you can be the, uh, the king. You know, he just, re, re, you know, rejected. So, you know, asking you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Politics um, is about leadership, and I lead in certain capacity. So um, everybody is into politics, whether you are a leader, because politics has two sides. Is it that you are a leader or you are a follower? So both of us are in it. So I, I'm, um, as a lecturer, I lead people. I have over 500 students under my influence. Yeah. Uh, as uh, I also pastor a church 
So as a pastor, I have people who are under the sound of my voice that I talk to. Uh, in different places, I come in contact with people. So that is leadership. I, this is my first time in this studio. Somebody brought me here. He led me. That is leadership. Mm. Uh, so leadership, according to John Maxwell, is, uh, is influence. So as many, it doesn't have to be one million people. Uh -huh. As many people under your influence, um, you, you'll be able to lead them. So for me as an artist, is with my art and doing my politics and my leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Professor. Thank you. Thank you guys you. for viewing. And remember, subscribe, share, and tell so much about our platform again. Here today, Professor Professor Bal Balaji uh, has been a, an inspiration, giving us um, a different side of um how we need to do things and um i'm so blessed i'm so in fact you know uh, i've learned more on this platform so guys thank you so much again professor god bless i will see you again again the plat when you well, whenever you come to Definitely. the uk Definitely. thank you so much yeah thank you All right. yeah thank you for your